And welcome, round of applause. <laughs> right, so we're here, episode number 408, Speak Up Monday, live, Tropical Nomad. We go live on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Now, as you would have uh, recalled, you know, maybe over two years ago now, uh, Tracy and I had this conversation of, you know, health of Bali, um, very important for Bali and beyond. So how do we find a place where once a month people can come and listen, enjoy, learn, uh, and imbibe some very good knowledge, you know? And then for those who, are, who want to can take part. So fast forward 22 episodes, this is number, episode number 23. We arrive here uh, t today with a wonderful guest, you know, and, and now tonight we're talking about the Bali Health Tourism Integrative Model 2024, uh, featuring uh, chairman of the BMTA, that's a Bali Medical Tourism Association, in conjunction with the Government Tourism Board, and I'll try my best to pronounce, Dr. Igade Wiriana Patrajaya. That's right. <laughs> I see, I got it right. You know, so look, again, tonight is, has been, you know, two years in coming, and tonight we're going to talk about, you know, what is this integrative model of, you know, health tourism and in Bali, and how do, how do we, you know, medical tourism being the entry point, and obviously what we, we have, you know, health tourism and wellness as well. So tonight's conversation uh, will be around this topic uh, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, my name is Robert Ian Bonnick. I'm the, the host and founder of Speak Up Monday, Destination Indonesia. Also RIB and Associates, growth strategist in Indonesia. So we help you know, international and domestic uh, companies create incredible projects here uh, in Bali and Indonesia at large. So um, let's, let's get started. So what I think would be really, really wonderful uh, would be if you could start just to maybe introduce yourself um, so we can get an idea of, of, of who you are, Dr. Patra. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Robert. Yeah, uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Ikedewi Riana Patrajaya. I'm a Balinese people. My background is a medical doctor, but I'm continue for Medicis Hospital Administration. I have experience as a director in government hospital in Tabanan district, and then after that in Bali Royal Hospital, Obros Hospital. And now, uh, I said that I start to learn about the health tourism. Yeah, my reason because uh, the central government, local government, is to push Bali as to start as a pioneer of the health tourism in Indonesia. And I myself, with uh, some of my friends as a director of the hospital, to make the association, we call that uh, Bali Medical Tourism Association. So maybe this is my, uh, my, what is my background. And I think that um, now we look that Bali maybe have a strengthening about the, the culture, about the environment, about the hospitality and etc. So I look before I only thinking about the healthcare uh, services. You are looking only the sick people, how we treated the people. Yes, this is there are two a group of the disease that we must be give a treatment. This is the infection disease and non-infection disease. And then after that, we looked at in the health sector, their for, uh, focus is about the prevention, about the promotion, about the treatment, and about the rehabilitation. So now we, will, we look at uh, not only for the treatment, we are talking about the uh, prevention, promotion, and rehabilitation. And our focus, because uh, our uh, national accreditation now in Indonesia, they focus for the patient center care. So it's different before, maybe they are only, th um, the important is the, about the medical, but now it's a patient center care. And why we look at uh, this is, we want that uh, after we discuss with the Tracy, we look at to in 
integration between the medical, the health, and the wellness. This is maybe the point that we would like to create in Bali. Yeah. That's good. A wonderful intro, wonderful. And look, Tracy, uh, just while we're there, a uh, lady here would like a seat, uh, if we can help her out there. That would be great. Thank you very much. So look, um, Tracy, I know that, uh, that you know, we've been here 23 times now tonight, but what would be really wonderful is if you uh, introduce yourself as well, so those people who maybe don't know you uh, can, uh, can hear a little bit more from your own lips. My name's Tracy G. Um, I'm here in Bali for the last decade or so. And my main focus here in Bali is uh, part, being part of a platform called Health Hub Bali that connects people to better health. So this um, program that we have today's focus is the future of medicine, the future of health that has been the past two years. But what we need here in Bali is an infrastructure to sit on, and that's why we've got Dr. Patra to join us today and explain what is already here in Bali. Health Hub's role is bridging the gaps in medicine and bringing it up to a gold standard and connecting with what's happening in central Java as well, so that we can all feel safe <laughs> with medicine. And not just that, it's a journey to health. It's a whole health program, which I personally have not seen anywhere else in the world. And, you know, uh, many of us here, maybe all of us here, right, uh, foreigners and locals included, but maybe the foreigners right now, you know, we love Bali, right? So, uh, you know, Bali can swell to something like seven, mil six million, I think. Santiago Uno said uh, the, the, the projection for next year, this year, we seven million tourists um, to, to come to, uh, to uh, Bali. But, you know, we're in this place now where, where foreigners do come. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, we have different hospitals which are already here uh, that people either like or don't necessarily like. Uh, we also have this challenge that I think it was a president, um, Jokowi, mentioned that, you know, that too many um, people are flying overseas to get that serious medical treatment as opposed to staying within Indonesia, right? And, you know, this needs to be reversed. Right? So then we have uh, you know, the, uh, this uh, special economic zone uh, in, in Sanur that I'm sure we're going to speak about soon as, an, as, an, as a way with Maya Clinic coming and two other international hospitals as a way to start to address um, some of these challenges. So, uh, so maybe the first question, uh, Dr. Patra, um, to you would be, yeah, um, where are we currently uh, in terms of infrastructure and where are we going in the next one to five years or so? Yeah. Yes, uh, I would like to inform that uh, now in Bali, there are 75 uh, hospitals, government, private, uh, and army hospital, And there are 250 clinics around Bali. Yes, the problem is uh, the distribution of the health facility, including the medical doctor, specialist doctor, dentist, is not similar every district in Bali. Yeah. And now we hope that uh, Bali, because the, as a tourism destination, international tourism destination, we hope that there is a main that we must be prepared in Bali is about the, the safety. Safety not only about the criminal, but including in health sector. So this is, uh, we are in the hospital organization in Bali, as already not only would like to achieve the national accreditation, but we would like to push to be the international uh, accreditation. It's already there are four, uh, five hospitals now is already international hospital by the GCI or the Australian accreditation. But uh, I think that I agree about the commitment of the, our government would like to bring the branded hospital come to Bali. Like what you said that about the Mayo Clinic will be come to Bali and maybe uh, on May in Sangla, now is Professor Murah Hospital, the biggest hospital in Bali. They will be open the wellness center, will be make a collaboration with the Sun Medical Center, South Korea. So this is the standard will be come to Bali. Yeah, yeah because uh, I know that before, our local people, the rich people, Indonesia people, we're going out to outside because the problem is about the distrust, about the quality of the services. Yeah, I hope, yeah, once again, 
from this condition, our government, our private sector, and the community would like to start to increase the quality of the services in Bali, like this. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, from G20, yes. uh, you know, we had some really important things come out. You know, one was obviously Tri Hitza Karana, this uh, three roads to prosperity, happiness, which I love, right? This Balinese philosophy. If you don't know it, just go and Google it. Um, that's not about this tonight. Also, the other thing was this PPP, private public partnerships, right? And, and so, so, so what I'm hearing uh, in what you're saying is that you know, these two things are really beginning to actually come together now yeah. and create some great infrastructure uh, for foreigners and locals to be uh, <coughs> trusting of, right? Um, what do we do then um, about the doctors themselves? Because I understand that you know, in the past, uh, there have been maybe some challenges with maybe foreign doctors or Indonesian doctors, you know, coming and practicing from different parts of the world or parts of Indonesia in Bali, for example. So is there anything happening in that area um, that's helping this as well? Yeah. Uh, if you are talking uh, in Indonesia, for the, f uh, like the foreign doctor would like to best practice in Indonesia, they must be following the orientation program. Okay. It's around one until two years about it. This is mixed sometimes, um, they said that, oh, our standard is higher than Indonesia. Why we must be orientation? This is the problem. And uh, the second, in the special economic zone in Sanur, the foreign doctor or the like uh, diaspora and etc. would like to practice in this area there is a like uh, what we call that uh, uh, like a incentive. They they don't follow the orientation, but they can practice in this area. Okay. But I hope it's not only in this area. I hope one times around Bali it can be, there. but it will be start in economic special economic zone in Sanur. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And Tracy, uh, is there anything coming up for you that you'd like to impart um, at, at this, this time? So what we're looking at is an attitude of medicine and we've got medical tourism. The point of difference is here, like you can go to Thailand or the other countries, you have medicine, allopathic, good doctors and that. But it's part of the whole health program here in Bali. It's connecting, we were just talking before about the medical, the health, and then the wellness. So it's a journey to health. So we can do certain things in Singapore hospitals and Malaysia, but the real healing part, we're talking about here in Bali. And that's where we've got world-class experts here because it becomes like a life medicine. People may have to do the rehabilitation. They may have to, um, how can you say, with the hospitals, we can do the testing so we can make plans for health with people in these state-of-the-art hospitals. Yeah, you yeah. talk. You talk. Yes. Uh, yeah, once again, our concept is about the, we would like to integration between the medical, the health and wellness. Maybe for the wellness, Bali is already famous for that. Yeah, but now for the medical and health, I would like that to find, for example, we call that there are 75 of the hospital in Bali. We have already select, there are 14 hospital, one for, as we look that from the regulation from the Minister of Health and from what the experience they have already to give services with the not only local people, including the foreign people, they have already have uh, something, the system and the uh, resources is enough for them. Yeah. So this is, uh, this program, it will be start from the medical first. Yeah. The doctor will be looking the condition of the uh, customer, and then after that, they will be knows about the, what is it will be the, the program for the healthy and the wellness. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is, and we need that in Bali now. We are growing up to for the diagnostic uh, center. Yeah, because in this medical uh, focus, the doctor must be must be have the enough resources about the diagnostic from the bone from the blood and from etc. So the program is for the health and wellness will be uh, like this. We call that integration within it. Yeah.
And, and that's with the functional medicine yeah. base, and that's what the doctors here are super keen to learn yeah. and in handpicking get different ones for root cause. Yes. And the, you know, the, the cool part, the word cool just came in. I was looking for another word. It didn't come. Cool came. The cool part is that, you know, the last 22 episodes that we've had here, you know, we, we've discussed so much. So please refer to those because, you know, all of those episodes have kind of paved way for this one tonight. Because it, it kind of brings in all of the knowledge, all of the learning, all of the practice, all of the teaching, all of the conversations that we've had uh, with many practitioners and experts, Indonesian, Balinese, uh, as well as foreigner, um, which is really cool to actually see. So the next question is about, by the way, if you're just tuning in from Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, tonight um, we're, we're talking to Dr. Patula from Bali Medical Tourism Association uh, here in Bali. And tonight is all about this integrative um, medical slash health wellness model for Bali in 2024 and beyond. So look, the next question for me, we've got it written down here. So a focus on vitality and longevity, right? So what comes up for either of you uh, when we speak about that? Yes, uh, maybe we, we remember about the Maslow theory that, uh, that yeah, this is the, about the health. Someone is health because there are four factors. The first is about the uh, genetic, and the second about the behavior, the third about the health facility, and the fourth is about the improvement. Yeah, I think that Bali is for the improvement maybe is, we call that, uh, our government has already declared that Bali to be the green province. As you know that maybe if you have a land, not 100% of the land can build. We must be make uh, what we, you call that about the three hitter karana. Yes. This is uh, about the relation between the human with the God, human with the human, and human with the environment. Yeah, I think that this is the, we look that there is uh, something that uh, already uh, we have from our <laughs> before. Yeah, so, and the second about the health facility. So now it's growing up, yeah. I think that Bali is open, maybe in practical, we looked at uh, some of the experts from the foreign country, they don't practice directly, but as a medical advisor. So it means that we'll be pushed the standard of the quality of the health services in Bali will be growing up. So I looked at this is for the, 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 what is the fatality and longevity problem. Yeah. So I was just, uh, just glancing down at some of the questions. You caught me. Ah! Um, so, so Tracy, uh, is there anything else you'd like to uh, add uh, in, into that section before we move on to the next question? Yeah, so with the infrastructure to, for longevity and vitality, we need these baselines, which we've discussed in other sessions. And that's why the testing, we, our bodies are so different. So we're, we're talking genetic, we're taking, talking to see exactly what our body needs to reverse what's been happening. And that's working along with the universities here, the research and people coming to practice the different protocols here with this can be, um, we can really set up the pace. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The way we eat, the way we think, the way we live, every way, it's a whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, once again, uh, this is uh, maybe uh, what I myself, this is, I think that I'm lucky to meet with you, <laughs> with Tracy and etc. Because before, I, do, I would like to start this program, but we don't know which uh, we must be to learn and etc. But I'm lucky because in Bali there is an expert about this. So maybe after this we will discuss about the five years, what we must be do in every place. And I hope that uh, everybody who loves Bali will can help me as a, I'm as a Balinese people to know about uh, maybe our culture and what is already wider about we had if we are talking about the taxu of Bali sometimes uh, the people thinking please bring the Bali come to Yogyakarta maybe for example like this but we said that we can bring the taxu of Bali 
because it's already made that of around thousand years ago. Yeah, that is it. This is to support that. Maybe you heard about the the Bali is maybe maybe the famous uh, movies about the eat, pray, and love. So in this program, we would like to start to to learn. I'm a Balinese people. Contact with the traditional uh, Balinese uh, medicine. So to make uh, integration with our program like this. Yeah. So this is maybe will be make that Bali is different with the other countries. Maybe. Yeah. You know the, that uh, unique quality. Yeah. You know that taksu, and I'm so glad you mentioned that that, that that word. I haven't spoken about that for for a little while, so it's it's great to hear it and put it back into the um, uh, awareness. But that's what attracts so much so many of us here, right? As this, you know, I mean, what Indonesia's seventeen thousand islands, two hundred languages, five hundred cultures, but Bali is the one which is the gateway for many foreigners to to come into Indonesia for those reasons. You know that that taksu, that energy, that. Um, vitality, that way we can heal, that we can kind of re be, re be reborn and, and heal, right? So I, I love that. So on that note, um, I've got a question here which is not on, on our sheet. So are there any other um, options uh, in, in Bali health tourism that you'd like to bring up or that you'd like to uh, maybe let people know about before we move on to the next question? Yeah, as we know that uh, if we are talking the health tourism, it means that from the agreement between the Minister of Health and Minister of Tourism, there are four areas for focus. This is about the first uh, medical tourism. It means that the sick people will come to Bali to treatment and etc. operation. And the second is about the medical wellness. This is about the prevention and promotion. The third is about the sport health tourism, yeah? And the fourth is about the uh, scientific health tourism. This is about the, maybe the research about the mice and etc. like this. So maybe this is that uh, we would like from the BMTA, uh, we'll have a program for this, yeah. But uh, I think that uh, the first, for mice, I have already run some of the international health conference in Bali. And then maybe for the medical wellness, yeah, with the concept integration uh, functional medicine, I hope that it can be start to push Bali as a health tourism destination. Yeah. Yeah. Tracy, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> next, next month, we have um, Modi. Modi yeah. will come yes, and that will explain the um, health tourism side from Jakarta. But um, what you mentioned, what did yeah. you just talk about? Yes. What did you reference? Yeah, the four. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so with the integrative, when, when we're starting from the medical yeah. and then we're integrating, what are some of the clinics, they're looking at hypothermia, bringing hypothermia. Yeah. yeah. But now, until now, we don't have the clinic with the hypothermia uh, facility. But... Uh, I myself with some of the, the owner of the clinic in Bali would like to thinking about the hypothermia, yeah. So when we're talking hypothermia, um, hyperbaric chambers, yes. PMF treatments, um, the ozone treatments, IVs, we're talking about, first of all, we have the medical diagnostic side, then to reset and restore health and detox, that's all part of the integrating with the health. Then later on we have the wellness habits, and then we're talking about the, uh, what would you say, um, Bali being a catalyst for change in health, then we can start uh, the patterns, whether it be movement, breath, and we go into these other type of retreat style tourism, which we'll discuss next, next yes. month, yeah. Yeah, for hyperbaric maybe, we are now in Bali, there are four uh, hospitals, as already have a hyperbaric chamber. But using for the maybe uh, the people have already have, uh, for the ocean uh, activity and the beauty and it is it's already and then for the ozone maybe there is uh, one of the clinic have already prepared for the yeah once again uh, this is uh, what thank you for the time to to give me uh, opportunity to inform because there is uh, maybe. What we call that uh, 
life challenges for the in the health sector because we have the ethical promotion of the hospital. So the hospital can do like a promote what they have in the, their facility like the other uh, uh, service or business. Yeah, because there is a ethical promotion of the hospital. Yeah, so why BMTA? One of the, my reason is I would like to promote what is the hospital have. Yeah, because I'm in under the Bali Tourism Board, not under the uh, hospital association. So maybe I can be more a little bit free to inform about the facility in Bali. Not so much. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and with with the model of that integrative, like we we could say it's patterns for the last hundred years. There's been research in Europe, in Germany, places like this. The clinics have all used these type of treatments as well. They've also been throughout Indonesia for the last thirty years that I know of in integrative hospitals. So it's not something new to Indonesia, but now it's about educating people that they understand themselves what choices and options they are there are. And then the testing, we can identify what blocks there are in the body and what treatments to bring the life back, yeah. So, so, so let's see, because tonight's very focused and I love that. I, I really, Dr. Patra, it's, it's great to have you here and get all of these uh, really cool answers in terms of like solid answers of where we're going in the future, which for the people here and the people watching will really help. But for the people here in the studio audience, let's, have a, let, let's just see if you're with us. So how many of you, raise of hands, have been to a hospital in Bali? Okay. <laughs> some, you know, some people's hands are, are, are like this, like, I'm not sure if I should say, put it up, be proud. All right, good. So um, how many of you had a good experience? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you had a bad or other different experience? Raise your hand. All right. Okay, so not everyone's answering. So some people here are not telling the truth. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say again. So out of the people that have put their hands up saying they've been to the hospital here, it's about, it about half of the audience. How many of you had a negative experience? Raise your hand. So just, just, just one? That's good. All right. Now, two words. What was the basis of that negative experience? The diagnosis was completely wrong. Okay. Great. So wrong diagnosis. Great. So that's a wonderful segue, right? So our next question is about the practitioner mindset. I had a feeling you'd answer, right? So, so one gentleman here, you know, went to the hospital, had, had clearly what he calls a wrong diagnosis, right? So these sorts of things are also what doesn't help, right? Because then people, uh, maybe they get that sense of, you know, is it safe? right to come here now we know it is because we know what's coming but it's not about us it's about them so when we speak about the practitioner mindset is there anything um, that you think needs to either change or needs to be amended um, going forward to meet this international standard and expectation yes uh, once again I'm sorry about your condition this day yeah, he's he's still alive. He's fine. <laughs> he's smiling. This guy, this yeah. guy, if you can't see him, is a reflection of health. He is fine. Okay, he's okay. fine. Yeah, uh, yes, because uh, the doctor will be make a diagnose. They will be have uh, some of the step. They will be make a communication with the patient, and then after that, they will be make a physical examination, and then. Sometimes we'll be supporting by the diagnostic uh, support, like a laboratory, radiology, and etc. I know that uh, our facility is, uh, this is the minimal standard in Indonesia. Maybe as we know that about the technology now is uh, growing up, is uh, very fast. But the other side that hospital in Bali this is a group of the doctor make a hospital. Not like uh, they have maybe the investor, they have money to make the hospital like that. But some now, before when I'm study, maybe in 2000, not the foreign people said that, like in, from Java, said that hospital in Bali is the big house to make a hospital to be a hospital. 
Yeah, this is the condition in Bali. Uh, once again, the, like uh, this is the wrong diagnostic is depend on the how the uh, the doctors is uh, to uh, to make a good communication, good uh, physical examination, and good of uh, the diagnostic supporting. This is the way to make a diagnosis. Yeah, like this. But uh, once again, sometimes uh, now the condition is Bali is every hospital they make a competition. Competition not only because by the hospital, because there is a standard from the social insurance. You know about the BPJS. BPJS not to make the standard of the hospital. You must be have like this, the system like this, the standard in like this. So this is, I hope that to make the quality of the services will be increasing, including the accreditation. Because before the doctor maybe have a, like, this is our authority. They don't have the clinical pathway, but now the clinical pathway is already to start to run in the hospital. Yeah, so I hope that uh, there is a system, a good system, will be make the uh, doctor will be follow the system. But before, this is the patient, it's mine. They don't thinking that this is, maybe the patient is not mine, maybe the other specialist doctor have responsibility like this. But now, because the system, yeah, once again, clinical pathway, patient center care, I hope that it can be increase the quality of things. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Dr. Patra. And look, Tracy, uh, from your perspective, you know, Health Hub Bali, uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, uh, Health Hub Bali is also a health tourism initiative, and three things which I bring up but haven't done it for a while, so maybe I'll do it right now. Three things which are important. Uh, number one is, in no particular order actually, is this dissemination of real-time information. So Tracy has access to an incredible wealth of practitioners from around the world, and of course here in Indonesia, of which there are some incredible practitioners and doctors as well, and that comes through. The second part is about this patient journey. So for many of us here, uh, as we know, Bali is incredible for wellness. We've all seen Eat, Pray, Love. Tell the truth. I know you have. You loved it, right? Eat, Pray, Love, great movie. But what we also have here is a range of, uh, how do you call it, Tracy? Uh, a range of uh, instruments that can be used which are scientific based. So what happens is that you can enter this Health Hub Bali system where you get tested. So the first thing is about baselines, which are scientifically measured, which can happen in the hospital because Health Hub Bali works together with the hospital system. From that point, as we said before, that's the diagnosis. Then how you treat that can then be used, as you mentioned before, with wellness, health tourism, all these different options. So what, what Health Up Bali does is that it also matches like a, like a health coach in a way that is able to take your case and kind of nurture and direct and guide you to, to like whichever practitioner you need to see. So that's really powerful. And the third part is about certification, which we're talking about now. So how is it that everyone in this practitioner network is suitably qualified and certified to do what they do safely so you know that you can rest assured that you're in good hands, right? So this is part of what Health Hub Bali does. And in the last couple of years now, I've been, you know, the government have come knocking and she's advising government on different things, also local hospitals here and a whole wealth of other activities. But... The thing which I love about Indonesia is this Binika Tunggul Ika, right? United in diversity. So now what we have is this incredible baseline from the ground up, right, of saying, well, how can foreign doctors, Indonesian doctors, and the whole healthcare system work together to find ways to create an incredibly robust, strong, professional system, right? And that's really what we're talking about tonight. So, look, coming on to this, we've got preventative, precision, and preservation. So, preventative, uh, precision, precision, and preservation. So, what comes up for you, either of you, when I bring up these three words? Yeah. Yes, um, if you are talking that um, the, in the integration functional medicine, it's not only talking about the 
medicine, yes, about perception, etc. But we are talking that uh, we would like to know about the function of the the body and etc. Like this, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, once again uh, we are we are talking that this is the prevention and promotion program for this. Yeah, I think I did it. Yeah. And by the way, for those who missed it, uh, Binika Tunggul Ika, United in Diversity, is the motto of Indonesia, in case you're wondering what I, what I meant, which obviously the motto underpins the ethos of the nation, right? So Tracy, you're about yep. to add to that. Yep, so in that whole health model, it's about precision, it's about knowing what's causing whatever the issue is, and then having a solution for that person's body, their genetics, epigenetics, whatever, and that working as teams together. And that way, yeah, we create a different model of health. Got it. And look, the last question uh, for us tonight, before we go to you, the audience. So if you have any questions in the audience, uh, we'll, we'll take the third mic from Dr. Patra. I'm sorry, brother, <laughs> but we'll give it to you back after, I promise. So we'll, we'll take the third mic and then uh, just raise your hand, uh, wait for a moment so we can get you mic'd up. And then uh, notice that this section, your question will be on camera. So there's a camera over here that will swivel and you'll see yourself on this wonderful monitor here. If you don't want your question to be monitored or be live on TV, uh, then you can ask afterwards, okay? Um, so if you have more of a private, personal nature, you can ask afterwards. So maybe start to think about what that question might be, okay? So last question for us at this point is the patient's awareness and responsibility. So that's you I'm talking about, right? So when we talk about yeah, the patient's awareness and responsibility, um, what are we talking about, Tracy and Dr. Patra? All right, then. So it's about us knowing what choices and options we have and not giving our power away to someone else because what's happening these days, we've got super healthy people and suddenly they have a diagnosis and they've got two months to live. What happened? They thought they were okay. So this is why we're saying, Hugh, while this medical tourism model is people can have a proper check, what's happening? Use the energy. It's a of Bali, it's a catalyst for change. It's a time where you can go into a space. We find now statistically the stress and the anxiety that's been happening and building up in people and being a root cause for disease, we can reset this as well. But we, all these things can be measured. And that's why the precision medicine, whether it be um, some chemotology or some natural basis, we've got means to test this and we'll be talking about that next month as well. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree with that, Tracy. But maybe one thing that I would like to inform uh, about the mental health, now the problem, Ooh, yeah, yes. about the anxiety. Uh, some of the maybe uh, re uh, source, uh, the information that around 60% of the, they feel sick, but 60% is about the psychologic, what we call that uh, psychosomatic, yeah. Maybe this is, uh, one that uh, sometimes they come to the uh, to follow the what is uh, you know about the melukat melukat is uh, uh, holy sour in Bali. So after that they feel that oh, I'm getting better like this. Yeah. So uh, the sign and the symptom is like what they feel. Oh, maybe I I feel that like a heart attack and etc. It's already sign and symptom. But when we make an examination, the medical examination, we don't find anything. This is about the psychology. Yeah. Maybe Bali for this, I think that there is a place for that. Yeah. yeah and, that, and that way people actually become responsible for their own thought, health, their own thoughts, their feelings, and they can actually repattern things. Things that they may, habits they may have had that they inherited from their parents. But with knowledge now and living in 2024, we can actually make different choices, mm. which will bring our nervous systems and that's where we get into functional medicine we start getting calm then the body can actually heal mm. so now comes to the question part from you Delev okay so if we have sister Ayu or Hadis around the third mic yeah there, there, there she is I love Ayu's like me? <laughs> Sekai Guzman Ayu's coming so while we uh, uh, move this uh, microphone to Detlev. I'm um, just over here, my darling, whenever you're ready. So w one on the show, they're called Bali Bersama Bisa. Uh, now they did the Lisa hotline, this mental health now. 
And I saw one of the founders a, a few days ago. They said they've now got funding. So now they're, they're able to put that, they're able to, to, to speak to and to manage a thousand people a day. Um, but we'll get them back on the show at some point in the future and to talk about that. But just while we're here before Detlev's question, so this whole uh, mental health um, you know, challenge that not just Indonesia, but the world is facing after COVID and you know, th this is not going anywhere. You know? So how well set up um, would you say is, is Bali uh, to handle um, this type of um, symptom? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have discussed with the psychiatry doctor and they have a tools. There is a, like, a, like a questionnaire, there is a question that uh, they simple, but from this uh, question, they can uh, like to look how about the mental health. About it. And after that, the problem is the, the people to come to a hospital, they will be choose the like the mental clinic. It means that sometimes I'm not crazy. Yeah. yeah, like this. So my program is the the doctors or psychologist will be come to the uh, their house or their facility or their resort. Yeah. So because this is maybe sometimes they don't need a drug that make uh, like a communication and to find what is the problem and etc like this so this is maybe i will be do because if the people come to the clinic or the hospital they don't come to yeah, yeah this is it's that stigma stigma like ah this. okay thank you I, I didn't think about that before yeah so uh brother detlev i'm um, just give wait for a sec while uh i look at that i think guzman's ready for you mate okay. ready yeah <laughs> okay so uh, um I'm here a little bit longer already as some of you and have my experience here and I'm also in the Rotary Club and we had once in a Rotary Club a very interesting meeting that was with uh, somebody from the Swiss consular and um, actually a very smart lady from Allianz Insurance yes. and uh, the, uh, uh, one of our founder members had a bad accident here and so the question came up what can we do and what is good what is not good and what was not surprising for me because only I also had only good experience in Bali was that uh, actually the, the, the lady from the Swiss consulate who is here for 25 years and this insurance lady, they both agreed that actually the doctors are all good here. The nurses have not the education yet because the system is just different. What I know for my wife's family when there's something, of course, you go to a hospital, but you don't have nurses around. <laughs> anyway, so I have really only good experiences. I also have only good experiences uh, uh, regarding the di diagnosis, and I never heard about bad ex experience in that. Um, there is only one thing what is, for me, a little bit disappointing, and I'm not sure if this was a decision of Manco Pastica or, or Pacosta now. Yeah. Um, the decision was that we want to support in, in Bali specifically healing methods from Bali. So, and there was for me a certain limit. Uh, I have to say to that that I have a, a, a little bit of bad disease, what is not really good healable by, by, uh, by traditional Western medicine. But it is very good to deal with, with acupuncture and with Ayurveda. And both is, I mean, it's not only me say this, this is also doctors say this. If you have this, acupuncture is excellent and Ayurveda. So, and now we're coming to the point. Why Ayurveda is not s such more supported from the government as it is part from the five Vedic books. So it is related to Bali, it is related to a mentality, to people here. This is what I strongly missing, that the Balinese healing method on one side, but on the other side, Ayurveda is not supported. And this, I would love to hear it is supported. 
I, I heard about so many programs here regarding retirees, et cetera, et cetera. And I always say, hey, if you're a retiree in Bali, excellent. The medical system is perfect. The only thing what you, meet, uh, what you need as a link to stay longer healthy is Ayurveda. That was my question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, about the, um, uh, the governor, Pak Koster, sorry to make um, governor regulation that about the healing Balinese medicine. Yeah. Because uh, Pak Koster would like that uh, we have in Bali for the healing using not only the train and they have from maybe the father and etc. like this. Yeah. This is uh, Pak Costa, the governor would like that we must be pushed the traditional medicine Bali. Yeah. Ayurveda in Bali there is a university uh, University Hindu Bali, they have the faculty for Ayurveda. Yes. Yeah. But the problem is about the, after the student pass from this uh, faculty, they don't have a license or a register. This is make that they can make, uh, they have a practice. So this is, this is the problem. Yeah. Now we, yeah, once again, uh, Pak Kostar, sorry, they finish, but it can be, it will be two times. Yeah, will be election in October this year. Yeah. But I myself in BMTA with the, there is organization, a Bali Usade, yeah, this is maybe Prof. Gel Gel, is a chairman, we have already to make a communication, yeah. We hope that, why we make an integration now, is already existing in the hospital, like in Bali Mandara Hospital, this is the government hospital. I'm as a sp supervisor in this hospital. We have make integration between the medical with the, uh, like uh, Usada Bali, yeah. Uh, yoga, acupressure, and then prana, it's as we call that a complementary alternative. This is the main, the, the, what is the, uh, the, the, the name from the Minister of Health. But once again, Bali would like not only the complementary alternative, but including the special, the Balinese traditional medicine have a opportunity to combine integration with the medical. This is, I think, that uh, uh, what we know until now about the regulation from the governor, uh, not uh, not it's uh, like don't give uh, like a yoga Ayurveda to practice in Bali, but once again from the faculty after the student finish they don't have a license to make a practice like that. yeah this is the problem yeah what a great question and a great answer thank you very much yeah. uh, any other questions anybody yeah one over there yeah. I came in late, so uh, is this on? Yeah. I came in late, so I don't know if we covered this. What, what's your, what do you think about the, this new hospital that's being built, the International Hospital and some more? I mean, is it necessary? Is it, uh, the, the rationale behind it was that the Balinese didn't like the hospitals here. They were going to Singapore. So this would capture that, that market. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, Maybe before I have already to say that uh, we are in Bali need the branded hospital come to Bali. Yeah. In Sanur, this is a Bali International Hospital built by the government and then will be as a private hospital. Yeah. Not uh, like a franchise from the Mayo Clinic. But Mayo, Mayo Clinic as a like a management advisor. But they will put their name on it. I don't know what they did. They did aside from that. Yeah. I'm sorry? I say Mayo Clinic put their name on the hospital, but I don't know what they did uh, aside from that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just earlier on, I, you, you just came after um, we spoke about this. Yeah. yeah so, so your question is very timely, uh, and you're, you're in you're in the zone. Um, but we spoke about it earlier on, and uh, and, and what um, is being said is that uh, is that may are basically the management of it, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah. So that that's uh, that's what uh, what the yeah. answer is that you're looking yes. for. Yes. But the facility, uh, the medical equipment, maybe it will be. Um, more advanced than the hospital is already in Bali. Yeah, they will be focused for the cancer, for the cardiac, cardiac, and then oncology, and then orthopedic like this. Yeah, it will be maybe there is a pet city in this area because until now the the hospital they don't have a pet city like this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question. So so look, what we'll what we'll do now is that we'll begin to begin to wrap up but so uh, a question just to leave you with uh, yeah. give you a bit of time to think about it, and for you too Tracy is you know so tonight you know we've spoken about this uh, medical tourism Bali Medical Tourism Association of which you're the chairman yeah. right wonderful thank you for coming it's been uh, I've learned many many things tonight so thank you very much and also, you know, we're talking about this integrative model um, that we've discussed uh, a little bit at length between medical, health, and wellness, uh, which, is, which is great again. You spoke about those four pillars that were really interesting and give people some solid baselines to hold on to. Uh, you've spoken about the future and what's coming in relation to your question as well about you know, the initiative of creating a special economic zone for which we have some incredible hospitals which are very advanced and can deal with that, uh, as Jokoi was saying, as you earmarked as well, that you know, too many people are moving out of Bali and Indonesia to get medical um, services and help. And it, it represents a lost opportunity, a missed opportunity. And obviously, as we move towards this, uh, this wonderful, inclusive approach that Jokowi has her heralded of foreigners, I Indonesians working together, living together, and so on. So we need to have those facilities here. So maybe the last question I'll leave you with is, you know, and I'll give you a few minutes to think about this, yeah. is that on this topic, uh, is there anything else you know, that you would like to say that maybe you haven't had a chance to say yet or you might be reiterating something that you've said before? So just have a think about what that might be. And Tracy, uh, the same to, to you. Uh, if there's something else there that you would want to add at this point or to reiterate. So I'll give you a bit of time. So until then, just want to say uh, thank you to you, uh, our studio audience. As you know, every Monday it's live. So we go live uh, in person, uh, we go live on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This is episode number 408. Uh, next week, 409, I guess. Uh, that will be Tom Corley, uh, incredible entrepreneur. Uh, he set up Bali Investment Club. That is an impact entrepreneur uh, and VC that's done incredibly well here in Bali. He's got a new project with some partners that we're going to talk about, which I, which I believe is addressing uh, this funding gap that exists in Bali slash Indonesia at large for companies to grow in the startup world. So that will be next week. Also, uh, Tracy here, next to me, Tracy G. So Health Hub Bali, if you're here in Bali, you can go and see her in person. And she is based, again, we've given Monsieur Spoon so much business. We should be partners. But uh, Pantai Prerenan, opposite Monsieur Spoon, uh, is where you'll find Health Hub Bali. <laughs> you'll find Detlef there too. Um, so opposite there. <laughs> So there you have an incredible um, suite of services that's offered in this, in this area. Also, you know, we have health markets and a whole bunch of different special activities and events that go on where you can have some one-on-one -on -one time with some incredible practitioners and kind of get up and close with Health Hub Bali to see how it operates, how it functions. And uh, I've, I've, I've had some great tests there. Again, pioneering stuff, really. So you've got to go. 
So, uh, I thank Tropical Nomad already. Great. So, we've got Guzman, we've got IU, we've got Hadis. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Dr. Patra, it's been a pleasure to meet another brother. Same haircut, yes. looking good, <laughs> shining up, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, another brother here in Bali. Thank you very much. Uh, Tracy, thank you again. Uh, always a pleasure uh, to, to see you, talk to you, and have you here amongst us, and obviously the studio audience. So, what we'll do then is that the question um, that we left with was that, you know, if there's anything else that you wish to add at this point uh, on this topic for tonight it may be something new that you haven't thought of before or it might be reiterating something that you've done or said already to remind us all right so um, we can start with you and dr. Patra thank you yes okay so yeah once again my principle is learning yeah and now we learn about the uh, integration medicine yeah yeah I would like to say that this is uh, we make a BMTA is it's mean that we start to learn and we would like to learn by doing yes. not only for the concept but we would like to learn. we start from the small and we act now this is my my, my what we must be doing in Bali I hope that one times Bali will be as a health tourism destination, not only for the culture, uh, like uh, education, and etc. But there is uh, one that uh, new in Bali is a uh, health tourism destination. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you, Dr. Patra. Uh, Tracy. Yeah. So learning by doing, and that 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 is the whole essence really of what we're saying what we're seeing the future of health as and health tourism here in indonesia and bali having the uh, already the infrastructure there for tourism and health resorts and then being able to shape these connected to the medical side so people can get their baselines they can have medical informed retreats and programs while they stay here in bali uh, just to answer the question about the um, ayurvedic and this type of things and also emergency care. Probably this is a good uh, session to do it. Originally, there was somebody that was sorting out a uh, first response system so that when tourists would come in at the airport, they'd have a number or an app they could download and get help. Because this is an issue with emergency care, trying to find a hospital or a clinic, and then having um, a hotline. So these are the type of things that are being set up. And uh, also checking that all ambulances they have, you know, whether it be defibrillators or whatever's needed to upgrade that, that we can be confident. Um, all sorts of, uh, yeah, mainly the emergency care. We have enough expats here as advisors with the, uh, our you know, doctor friends here as well. So that's one point. As far as Ayurvedic, we, we treat, we, for the hospitals, we want to keep the standard. We talk medical, we talk allopathic. We come from that space. So our entry is first of all west meets east. So we get the baselines and the, use the science and technology. But then the real healing is over there, whether it be the emotional, the mental health. But then we use what we call whole health, which is the um, Chinese medicine and the Ayurvedic model. We incorporate that with OSADA. And that's with the universities, they're getting the science and the data with these hospitals. They gradually will put programs together and people learn by doing, they can stay in their health resorts and um, have programs set up for rehabilitation. Mm. Bali Medical Tourism Association, Health of Bali, Speak Up Monday, RIB and Associates, Tropical Nomad. Thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you. Okay.